Hi, I'm glad you could join me today. I'm in the book of Ezekiel, all the way back in the Old Testament, that prophet who was preaching to the people of Judah as they were either going into captivity or perhaps already were in captivity there in Babylon. And in that particular passage in chapter 22, the, uh, the prophet brings out the number of sins that the people have committed that have led them into this captivity. He talks about their idolatry. He talks about their shedding of blood, their extortion. He talks about the injustices that these people had done for, uh, to, to others in their community. He speaks about the fact that, that the widow and the orphan were, were ignored. But then he, at the very end of that passage, this is in verse 12, he says, and you've forgotten the Lord your God. And so later on, as he goes on and he explains what's going on with them and why these things are so, so terrible, he looks to Ezekiel and he says, I was looking for someone who would stand in the gap. Someone who would come and appeal to me on behalf of the people of his nation. And Ezekiel was supposed to be that person. And it is true in our day as well, because the, the sins of, of Judah at that particular time are no, uh, no worse than the sins of us here in America in the 21st century. We need to be conscious that we also need people to stand in the gap for the sins of this nation. That's the only thing that is staying the hand of judgment upon us. That there are people, thankfully, who are appealing to God for his mercy, for revival, for forgiveness, for the sins of this nation. Now, keep in mind that the sins of our nation are going to be judged. They are going to be um, uh, adjudicated before the throne. And we will not be uh, overlooked for the sins of abortion and pornography and sensuality, for the injustices of our world, for all of the uh, materialism that we experience, for uh, the, 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 the lying and the cheating that's going on throughout our society. Those things will be judged, but we do need people who will stand in the gap. And the purpose of standing in the gap is not to prevent that judgment, but rather to delay that judgment. And, and that gives more time for people to truly repent and to be awakened to the fact that they themselves have been uh, guilty and they themselves are sinners in need of an atoning work, which we know in this generation as the blood of Christ. So the question before Ezekiel was, will you stand in the gap? And will you be the one who will intercede for the people before the Lord himself? Now we on this side of the cross have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, the New Testament tells us. And so we, we don't have to um, appeal for our nation because of our goodness, but instead we appeal on the basis of his shed blood for us. And we are confident because the scripture tells us that he himself is interceding for us. It's interesting that both Jesus is, um, is interceding for us as well as the Holy Spirit is interceding for us. Two of the three parts of the Trinity are described as interceding for the saints. We are so grateful and blessed in this way. But it doesn't, doesn't relieve us as his people of the responsibility to stand in the gap for those around us. We need to be people who are intercessors. 
We need to pray for our nation. We need to pray for our churches. We need to pray that God would be merciful to us as individuals because we ourselves are as guilty as any. Sometimes we forget that it is our own sin that even, even if we have never had an abortion, have we done everything that we can to protect the lives of unborn children? Even if we've never been involved in slavery or trafficking or anything of that, have we done everything that we can to help those who have? And so, so we ourselves, to a certain degree, are guilty, are culpable, and we will, we will pay for that. But the good news is that there are people in this society, perhaps you're one of them, that is standing in the gap for the sins of this nation and for the sins of, uh, of people in this generation. And so I would urge you, take that very seriously. This is a, an appeal that we stand for those around us and for the sins of those people. They may never come to understand who, who he is, but we still are responsible to uphold them. Let's pray together. Father, we ask you to give us the grace that we need to stand for the people in this generation. We ask that you would sustain us and strengthen us and provide for us. And we pray, Father, that you would delay that judgment that you will bring so that we will have time truly to repent as a society. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I hope you have a great day.